Good morning. Good morning. It's good to see all of y'all. It's been a long time since I got to see a lot of your faces. Uh, it's truly a blessing to be here this morning. Uh, you know, good to have this good number out here with us. And uh, I tell you, the Lord's uh, provided a beautiful day for us this morning. I know some are saying is uh, we're all having to uncover some plants this morning and had a little frost. Um, but it's uh, the Lord knows what we need. And uh, he has truly blessed us. Uh, I tell you, I know when I see or say a show of hands of uh, who God's blessed these past, especially these past few months, I guarantee you every one of us would raise our hand this morning. Amen. Amen. Um, but uh, this morning, uh, just uh, as far as announcements, I don't guess we really uh, got all that much, but uh, we have, uh, I know this is a little different out here, um, and again, God has blessed us with this yes. day to be able to uh, come together out here in one accord again, and uh I just again, I like to just welcome you all, and uh, it is good to see you once again. We just got uh, um, a couple of things. I think uh, the kids is going to uh, sing a song for us this morning, and uh, going to meet some other people here singing, and um, y'all just uh, just go along with us here and just enjoy enjoy this day and this time together. And uh, it's good to have y'all here, and I guarantee you the Lord's here with us. Today. Amen. Amen. And, uh, <clears throat> but. Uh, uh, I tell you what, uh, before we get started with anything, has any, uh, anybody got any special prayer requests this morning? I got to pray. Amen. You can repeat it. I just probably won't. I'm going to be great grandma again. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. Praise yeah. the Lord. <laughs> Brother Gary and Sister Joyce is going to be grandparents again. Great grandparents. That's the one. Yeah. Garrett, oh, uh oh. <laughs> uh, that is a blessing. Amen. Let's remember all these when we need to pray. Any others this morning? I have a Eric Herman? Yeah, I remember this. Uh, he's battling cancer there and he's come back on him, so uh, let's remember this. Also in prayer. Any others? I heard I work with. Uh, she had a very traumatic delivery a few weeks ago with a baby, and the baby's home and she's doing good. But um, they found out she could possibly have cancer for the mama. The woman was 30, 34 years old, so she needs a prayer for her. Amen. Remember this, church. Anyone else? We have a cousin who has an autoimmune disease that's attacking her liver, and uh, they put her on a, a wait list for a liver this week. Uh, so if everyone will keep, keep her in the prayers that, that something will come up for her before something extra bad happens and that she'll be, uh, do good throughout the surgery. I know the there are all kinds of visitors this church. morning. Yeah, there you go. There right there. But, uh, let's remember also uh, the ones that are, uh, uh, have been, I know we are all, we've all had to deal with this, uh, the virus and things going around, but especially the ones that has, uh, has gotten it, um, all our uh, health care workers. Um, and as they've been mentioned too, all of our um, emergency uh, responders and such, all that has to deal with it uh, face to face every day. Uh, let's continue to remember each and every one of them in their prayers. And uh, I know there's a lot that still has it, a lot that uh, has gotten over it. Um, but uh, let's still do remember this. And uh, also, as Brother Keith has mentioned too in the past call, uh, there's been some uh, very great blessings going on. Our sister Shirley, she's back home. And uh, called Brother Ted the uh, other night, and uh, she she sounded real well, and said and Brother Ted said she's doing real well, she's doing she's doing good. But continue to remember them both. And uh, I know 
And our brother said, Ted, it's, it's really what it was. It's, uh, in any circumstances, it's hard for them being apart uh, for that long. And uh, But they said they're truly grateful to be back together and that God has touched that family. And uh, we have many, many others. I'm kind of, I'm kind of really Keith. I don't like to start mentioning names because I know I forget somebody every time. But uh, remember all these, though, and uh, keep them in your prayers. But, uh, is there any other this time? This. Anyone else? I want to thank the church for the prayers because yes. uh, anyway, God, God let me live and I'm going to try to start doing better. I don't know. Anyone else? Anyone else? If not, then uh, uh, I'd like to ask uh, Brother Gerald, would you lead us in word of prayer? Our Heavenly Father, Lord, again, we thank you for this day, Lord. We thank you for the beautiful sunshine that, that you've blessed us with. Lord, we just can't thank you enough for letting us to be here this morning. Lord, and, and we know it's been a long time but since we've been here, but we know that with your help and and God's help, Lord, we, we'll be able to survive this thing, and, and uh, we just can't wait to get back inside the church to, for, to get a little bit more of your blessings that you've already blessed us with. Again, we thank you for this day. Be with all the, the prayer requests that have gone out, God, and just, just help them this morning, whether it, they be uh, uh, bedridden or, or just in the hospital for overnight uh, coverage or, or anything like that, God, but we just can't thank you enough for, for being with us this morning. Again, be with Brother Keith as he stands before us here in a little bit. Just bless him this morning, God, and, and not only him, but everybody that's here this morning, God, we can't thank you enough. Forgive us for we fail you. In Jesus, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Brother Gerald. Um, i tell you, we're going to try to sing a couple of uh, songs here um, just a very very familiar song just try two songs here and uh, um, and then uh, we have got uh, a little something we try to do here every mother's day uh, that, uh, a gift to the uh, youngest and the eldest mother uh, I'm going to get brother, uh, uh, brother Josh one of them to come, come up and do this because kind of walk on tiptoes here doing this you got to be careful on that oldest word <laughs> but uh, but now we uh, we want to uh, do this and then we're going to uh, have the, uh, the youngins uh, to sing a, a song and uh, uh, Miss Teresa there glory it but uh, as she had mentioned what we're going to do the youngins uh, help us sing we're just we're just going to sing just where you're at and uh, if you will just stay where you're at and they're going to sing a song there but uh, we're going to start off here uh, sing a very familiar song let's all uh, sing uh Sing all four verses to Amazing Grace. Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but
try to sing this song. Uh, uh, we've sung we've sung it before, and we sing it. We, we try to sing it this uh, on each uh, Sunday that uh, Mother's Day we have. Uh, so, uh, as if I could hear my mother pray again. <coughs> How sweet and happy seem those days of which I dream, when memory recalls them now and then. And with the rapture sweet my weary heart would be, if I could hear my mother pray again. If I could hear my mother pray again, if I could hear her tender voice as then, so glad I'll be it would mean the hash to me. If I could hear my mother pray again, she used to pray. to pray that I on Jesus would rely and always walk the shining gospel way. So trusting still is love, I seek that home above where I shall meet my mother some glad day. If I could hear my mother pray again, if I could hear her tender voice as then, so glad I'll be it would mean so much to me. If I could hear my mother pray again. Her work on earth is done, the life crown has been won. And she will be at rest with him above. And some glad morning she, I know, will welcome me to that eternal home of peace and love. If I could hear my mother pray again, if I could hear her tender voice as then, so glad I'll be, it would mean so much to me if I could hear my mother pray again. Sister Jeanette, we're going to have the piano sit out here for you next week. <laughs> <laughs> we need you. <laughs> All right. Um, Yeah, this is this is something here that is a time that uh, we just try to recognize all all our mothers are very special and uh, you know as that song is mentioned there too you know we've got some that has gone on and be with the Lord and is not with us right now but uh, you know with us in spirit but um, you know we've uh, we've got uh, a lot to be thankful for you know those times that that was, uh, that was uh, spent uh, spent with them and uh, and again, you know, we got uh, a lot that, uh, uh, Justin, you want to be laughing now. Um, <laughs> uh, but no, we uh, just be thankful for the, uh, whether if she's gone on or whether she still has her, the mother that God gave her. Uh, you know, uh, they were truly a blessing. They're the things that, uh, the things they give up for us um, and uh, the things that they, you know, do for us, you know, we need to truly, truly be thankful. But uh, at this time, we want to uh, recognize uh uh, two of our uh, two of our mothers out of the church here today that um, are very very special to us and uh, we're going to start uh, I can't remember which one goes but I think we're going to start with the eldest uh, uh, mother so uh, let's uh, I tell you what let's start at mm, let's start at 75 75 raise your hands if 75 or older Okay. All right. Say. All right. Let's say seventy. Um, Got seventy-seven right here. Seventy-seven. 
Okay, anybody older than 77? Thelma. Uh-huh. Any others? Thelma. 77. All right. Good deal. I tell you, we're going to, I, I really don't want to, we're going to do this just a little bit. Well, yeah. You can put it in the past. We want to ask who is our youngest mother. I don't even really know where to start there. Uh, let's see here. Uh, 30. 30 or younger. Any mothers 30 or younger? 30? Okay. 30, 35 and younger? Amber. Anybody older, younger than her? <laughs> Where's Anna? <laughs> okay, sorry. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right, let's give them a round of applause. At this time, uh, we're going to let the, uh, you Trace, if you want to step up here just a minute. Try to sing a couple songs right here this morning. Uh, we've uh, this first one. It's been a while since I've sung it, and I really didn't know what to uh, sing. You know, uh, uh, with everything that's been going on. But um, this uh, this song I'm gonna sing here is entitled uh, "There's a Record Book." And uh, you know, uh, I know we I know they got the we got our names down and uh, different things up here in the courthouse for different things and stuff, records they keep and stuff. But, uh, you know, the, there's really one true record there that really counts. And there's one true book that really counts. And that's the book of life. And, uh, you know, I just ask you today, hey, if you don't know your Lord and Savior, if you don't know that your name is written in that book of life, you know, I ask and beg you Lord, to, to accept him. And, uh, and I know that you know that your name is uh, written in that book. But uh, just... Uh, Pray for them as I try to sing this here. Uh, I think I think it's one by the friend of the Lord Jesus. There's a record.
This last one I'm going to sing, I know y'all know this one very well, uh, and I just, I just ask y'all to sing along with me on this one, and uh, it is probably one of the most appropriate songs, I guess, for this time, but it's uh, simply entitled, Thank You for Your Blessings on Me. upon me as I struggle along. They say I have nothing, but they are so wrong. In my heart I'm rejoicing how I wish they could see. These clothes are not new. 
What a wonderful song. I thank God for that song. Thank you, Lord, for your blessings on me. Don't prepare your heart for the Word of God. Uh, nothing will. Amen. For we've truly been through a time uh, over the last two months, an unprecedented time, a time that probably two or three months ago you'd never thought that you would ever have to go through. Uh, here we are in uh, 2020 and facing some of the uh, situations that we're in. Uh, but you know, God knows uh, what He's doing, and God's still on the throne, ain't He? Amen. amen. Right there's a good place to say amen. amen. All right? Uh, you're, you're in your Father's house. I want you to understand, uh, this is God's creation. Uh, this is where I belong. <laughs> this is where I feel the most comfortable in, in the presence of the Holy Spirit, is in His creation. And uh, I thank you so much for coming and and join with us, uh, and this is a worship service that we all can be a part of. And I would ask you to, to be a part of that, and just give God praise and worship, amen. And, and uh, we've got a lot to be thankful for. Brother Darrell, we've got a lot to smile about, amen. Uh, we've got a God that's on the throne. He's in control. He's seen us this far, and praise the Lord, he'll carry us the rest of the way, amen. Uh, can everybody hear me all right? Is there enough volume? All right, I want Miss Kennedy to hear uh, everybody else, all right? That'll be all right. Not anything that I have to say, uh, but what does say the Word of God? Well, that's where we're going to find our help uh, right now. Uh, it's the place that, that our forefathers found their help, and if there's any help going to be had today, that's where we're going to find it. Amen. Ain't that right, Joseph? Amen. He's got our help. He's a very present help in time of need. Uh, just to let you know where we're going to be at, uh, two verses, uh, John chapter 19. Uh, John chapter number 19, if you'll turn with us there, in the Word of God. We're going to look into the Word of God for just a moment. Uh, you know, you'd think uh, it's been probably two months since I've had my family gathered around me as I see you here today. And uh, you would think after two months of not seeing you, it may be 2.30 or 3 o'clock when the preacher gets done. Uh, we'll try our best not to do that. Uh, we want to hear from uh, heaven like Pharaoh did and, uh, from the Lord said let my people go we don't want to do that uh, amen we want to uh, give you what God has given us and then uh, we'll go on about the day but uh, it's it's not by chance that the Lord has allowed us to gather together again and it be on Mother's Day I don't believe there's a, a greater day for us to gather together than on Mother's Day uh, and I appreciate you being here, those that's in the cars, those that's in the, in the chairs, and those that's listening at home. Uh, we, we're, uh, we're so thankful to have you, and we've got some of our elders, some of our families 
uh, that's still, uh, you know, a little hesitant about getting out, and rightfully so. You should be. You need to follow the Lord and take care of yourself. So I want you to understand that the church loves you. We're praying for you, and we're just waiting for the hand of God to get us back to where we can worship together, fellowship together. And uh, I'm a hugger, amen, and uh, it's hard not to run up and grab you and, uh, and give you a hug, amen. But uh, uh, some of you might have to uh, give a whooping too, amen. Ain't never, it's been so long <laughs> since I've seen you. I'm sure there's a few in the crowd that deserves one, amen. Can we have a husband say amen right there? <laughs> All right, I like that. You're going to get in trouble on Mother's Day, amen. Uh, you know, I do. I want to I want to wish each and every one of you uh, uh, mothers a happy Mother's Day. Uh, this is a very, very special day uh, for me, and uh, it, you know, some are easier than others. This is this can be a hard day. Uh, we want to acknowledge that it's a hard day. But uh, if you've got in your past or in your present a godly mother, amen, you've got a lot to be thankful for this morning. And uh, we want to reflect on some things in the Word of God. Uh, but before we do, uh, we want to go to the Lord in prayer and ask His blessing uh, on the message before we uh, read the two verses the Lord's laid on our heart. Uh, let us pray together. The Heavenly Father, we're your servant, God. Uh, Lord, we ask you, Lord, to reach in our heart, God. Put your words, Lord, uh, in our heart, in our mouth. Bring back to remembrance those things that we have studied. Those things that you won't preach, God, I know there's a lot, God, that uh, is for me that I have to uh, take and put on uh, my heart and my life. But, God, there's that measure that you give us that you won't brought to your people. Lord, we thank you for this day. Thank you for every one of your faithful children that's come out, God, those that are home, Lord, those that are sick. I pray your blessing on them. Most importantly, God, for that heart that does not know Christ as their personal Savior. Lord, I pray that you'd reach in that heart through song, through your word, uh, through the Holy Spirit, God, and stir their heart and show them their need of salvation. Lord, thank you to Heavenly Father for the godly mothers that we have, God, that we have had in our lives. And God, we give you honor and glory for it all. For every good and every perfect gift comes from you. We love you and we thank you. Ask your blessing. Lord, as always, help us to decrease that Christ may increase. Amen. Amen. As we read in the scripture here, uh, I want to take you to a time. Uh, this is uh, when Jesus was on the cross. And uh, we're going to look into a passage of scripture there. And uh, I've never really uh, seen this as the way God has showed it to me before. I don't know that, uh, that I, I, I definitely don't believe I have ever preached on this very topic in this portion of scripture. And we're thankful to be able to bring that to you. And uh, this is pertaining to our mothers. And uh, as I was thinking about Mother's Day and about all of our mothers and, and even what we've been through over the last couple of weeks, Miss Dottie, I've seen uh, many, many mothers and many fathers too uh, fulfill a role in their home that uh, they're not used to. I mean, they, there's moms and dads that have become their school teachers, amen, their caretakers. Uh, I jokingly said, but with all sincerity to another person the other day, I said, quite frankly, there's some moms and dads that's learned how to be moms and dads over the last couple of months. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Uh, Y'all can get involved in that, all right? Uh, there, there's truth in that. Uh, you don't have to go far uh, before you see uh, children that are unparented, uh, undisciplined. But I thank God we have several. We've got many that are raised and reared in godly homes, that moms have been moms and dads have been dads, and I'm so thankful for that. It's, it's always amazing to watch moms grow with their children. Uh, there's one thing that uh, uh, I, it was hard for me to transition over to let my children uh, at 12, 13, 14 years old have a cell phone. Uh, was, that, was that hard for y'all? Some of you, your little ones are running around with them now. Uh, but one thing that I have always been thankful for with that is that I could always uh, know where my children were at, whether they realized it or not. Amen? <laughs> That's right. Uh, but, uh, you know, one thing that always gave me pleasure is that if they needed anything, if they needed dad, if they needed mom, they was able to get in touch. 
uh, with us. I've, I've, I've watched moms try to transfer into that and, and watch some of our uh, older moms and elder moms uh, get uh, maintain contact with their, their children. And uh, it reminded me of a text conversation that I'd heard it had been several uh, months ago, maybe even years ago. It was a conversation that mom had with her uh, younger son. Uh, he was at school, and mom texted uh, uh, text her son and, and uh, put on the text, your great aunt Carol has just passed away, LOL. Nobody got that, did they? <laughs> Are you with me? Somebody not, all right? Mom texted, uh, your great aunt, aunt Carol just passed away, LOL. The son texts back, said, Mom, why do you find that funny? She said, text back, son, what do you mean? He said, well, LOL means laugh out loud. She said, text back, oh my goodness, I thought it meant lots of love. <laughs> she said, I've got to go. I've got several phone calls to make. <laughs> <laughs> That's in trouble, isn't she, man? But that's just one example of moms uh, and, and how they interact and how they take care of their children and uh, always changing, amen, stories after stories about that. Uh, but the title the Lord has given us for the message is simply taking care of mama. Think about that, taking care of mama. For every aspect in your life, whatever you go through, whatever situation that you come upon, I promise you the greatest example that you will ever receive in that situation is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Here in this passage of Scripture, as we look in John chapter 19, verse 25 through 27, we find in the Scripture Jesus on the cross. And as Jesus is on the cross... There at the foot of the cross stands his mother, Mary. For those of you that are a mom, a mom or a mom figure, or those that have a mom or, or understand what it's like to have that godly mom and that godly influence, words nor even a picture could express the pain and the turmoil that Mary must have been going through the time that she was watching her blessed son the Savior of the world hanging on the cross. Let us read in the scripture. As the Bible says in verse number 25 of John chapter number 19. The Bible says now there stood by the cross of Jesus his mother. And his mother's sister Mary the wife of Cleophas and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus therefore saw his mother. And the disciples standing by, whom he loved, he saith unto his mother, Woman, behold thy son. Then saith he to the disciple, Behold thy mother. And from that hour that disciple took her unto his own home. You know, it's been said that uh, those people that speak on their deathbed uh, that you need to really listen to what they say because they mean exactly what they say. How much more so on the cross at Calvary as Jesus had been whipped, had been beaten, uh, and should have been dead at the time that he, played, he was placed on the cross. But yet as Jesus hung on the cross, the Bible records, I believe it's some seven different phrases or seven different times that the Lord had spoken. The Lord was, uh, as he was on the cross, as we know that it was very difficult to breathe on the cross. Actually, the death of the cross was brought about by asphyxiation where people actually smothered to death because they, their body became so weak they could not raise themselves up to take another breath. So don't think for one minute that Jesus did not choose his words very carefully. A couple of those phrases we find that uh, Jesus looked upon the soldiers and upon the Roman soldiers and those that were was crying out, crucify him, crucify him. One of the phrases was that Jesus said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Another phrase was uh, uttered by our Lord and Savior whenever the thief hung on the cross and looked at Jesus 
and said, Remember me when thou comest unto thy kingdom. And Jesus uttered these words, Today shalt thou be with me in paradise. The third one we find is this phrase that we have quoted and read to you in the scripture here today. As Jesus dealt with his mother and dealt with uh, his disciple whom he loved, which is none other than John the Baptist. Also we find uh, that Jesus spoke, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Whenever he took on and became, the Bible said he became sin for us all. And Jesus uh, had to see and had to understand that God himself had to turn his back on his dear son as he became sin for us. And as he hung on the cross, and, uh, he, he cried the, these words, I thirst, as they gave him vinegar mixed with, uh, with vinegar and there, and water mixed with vinegar. And uh, we see also, uh, we see him utter these words just before he gave up the ghost. Jesus said, it is finished. And in the last phrase, we see that he said, Father, into thy hands commend my spirit. Notice all those uh, those six other phrases dealt specifically, specifically with salvation. Uh, the, the phrases dealt specifically with his work on the cross at Calvary. The plan of salvation and the deliverance of that one uh, that hung on the cross there with him, the repentant thief. And we find, uh, but yet there's one phrase there, and it's our text scripture, that deals with something totally different. All the six there, other than this one, deals with salvation plan. But we see the importance, and that's what I want to get to you, uh, get uh, through today. The message to you today is this, how important it must have been for Jesus to acknowledge and recognize the love of his mother and how important it was and is to Jesus that his dear sainted mother was to be well taken care of. Now, uh, first of all, I want you to see something about Mary. The Bible calls her blessed. Do you remember the time uh, that's recorded over in Luke chapter number 1 and verse number 28? Uh, we find the angel of the Lord uh, come to Mary and explain to Mary what was going to take place. Uh, that she was chosen and favored, highly favored by God. That she would carry the Savior of the world. God's only Son. Amen. So it begs to, for us to stop right there and understand this. Mary was a woman just as you and I. Amen. As she was no different, she walked in this flesh and contrary to some belief, as she committed sin and needed a Savior just as you and I. It's important that we understand that because on Jesus' mother's side, as he was born into flesh, this flesh that is tempted to sin. Uh, but yet on his father's side, he is the son of God. Amen. The one that was able to walk in the flesh just as Mary was able to give him. Uh, but yet the Bible said he was in all points tempted yet without sin. Amen. So we see that she is called blessed in the scripture there. Uh, the Bible said in Luke chapter 1 and verse number 28. And the angel came unto her and said... Hail, thou art highly favored, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. I couldn't think of a woman to be any more blessed uh, than to be chosen by God uh, to receive into her womb uh, the virgin womb there. I uh, received the seed of the Holy Spirit uh, that would be impregnated uh, in a virgin woman. Amen. What, what a great blessing. But I would challenge you here today to understand every woman that calls herself a mother. Amen. Now there's some mothers today and mother figures. Maybe you've not physically gave birth uh, to some children. There's some mothers today that have adopted children, have taken children in. We're so blessed to have uh, godly mothers here at Oak Level Baptist Church. From our eldest uh, to our youngest, you're a mother in the eyes of these children and these young adults 
And I want you to understand, God calls you. And I believe that you're just blessed today. Uh, you're blessed, amen, uh, that you've got children, amen. Uh, you're blessed today that God has given you uh, the ability to have uh, children that you can bestow a uh, love upon. And I'm going to tell you, there's no greater blessing uh, than a woman can have uh, than to have a young child or a little baby, amen. Oh my, listen, you go into the, uh, the, the, the hospital and you watch uh, uh, the mother give birth uh, and you can see the great pain and agony and the turmoil that she goes through. Uh, but my, whenever she gives birth uh, uh, to that son or that daughter and that son or daughter is placed uh, on the bosom of that mother, uh, all that pain uh, and all that anguish uh, is gone away because uh, as she realizes how blessed uh, that she is. Amen. Thank God for a mother's love. It was important to Jesus that's so important that he made sure that his mother was taken care of on the cross at Calvary. We see the heart of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We seem to see the tender love and care of our Savior as he hung on the cross, had compassion and pity for those that were nailing him on the cross that he would ask his heavenly Father to forgive them. Not only that, had compassion and love for the repentant and the unrepentant thief. He loved him just the same, but it was the choice of that repentant thief. But yet here we see the tender love of our compassionate Savior as he was there hung on a cross in agony as he called out to the disciple whom he loved, John, and he called out to John and said, Behold thy mother. Now look into the scripture we see. A lot of people will quote that woman, Behold thy son, in the sense that he, Jesus was saying, uh, Woman, look upon me. That is not what the scripture is saying. What Jesus was telling, uh, telling his mother Mary at this time, said, you see this man John standing beside of you. I want you to understand I've given him the divine authority and the divine responsibility to be a son unto you. I must go away, but I'll not leave you comfortless. Hey, that's what Jesus Christ is all about. Hey, man, he's gave you the Holy Spirit. But listen, if you're a mama today, if you're a son or a daughter, that God's not only give you uh, the Holy Spirit, he's gave you that son or daughter. He's gave you that mom or dad. He's gave us a church family that we can come together, worship together, cry together, love one another together, and go through the hard times, shout it through the good times. Amen. The love of Christ is what constrains us and holds us together. Amen. Thank God I stand before you. Blessed today day because I've got a church family and a, and a good children and, a, and, a, and, a, and, a, and had a godly uh, mama uh, that, that has went on to be with the Lord look back and draw some blessed times and blessed memories precious memories of the time spent with mama we must move on not only we see that Mary was a blessed woman because the angel had proclaimed that because she was the mother of the son of God but yet we also see that Mary also faced difficulties, didn't she? Can you think of any mother that would have had a harder time than Mary? What are some of the difficulties you can think of? Well, the first one was that she was looked on and she was ridiculed. I believe even Joseph had doubt in his heart until the angel of the Lord come to him and told him not to fear to take Mary to be his wife. Because what was found in her was of the Son, was of God and of the Spirit of God. But yet, what, would it, what it must have been like to look out among the crowd. No doubt, even her own family and those in the community and those in the city. Don't you think, listen, we come from a small town uh, here in Austin, Roaring River, around Elkin. But good news seems to travel on the back of a snail. <laughs> Amen? But bad news flies on the wings of an eagle. You ever notice that? And uh, But you let somebody mess up. You let sin come in. Amen? It's the talk of the town. Uh, it seems like as long as people are talking about sin, doesn't it? 
Amen. I believe it was no different in a little town called Bethlehem. Whenever uh, she became pregnant and the word was about that, here she was, a woman out of wedlock and pregnant. And no doubt uh, she had a hard time in that. But we find that not only had a hard time in that, and the Bible records over there in Mark chapter number 6 and verse number 3, uh, you'll find that Jesus also had uh, half-brothers and sisters. Do you know that? We find it's recorded. I believe there's four brethren uh, of Jesus that, that, that is named there in the chapter of Mark, but also it refers to sisters that Jesus had. Wouldn't you think that Mary had a hard enough time being the mother of the Son of God, but yet she had other siblings there to raise also. Just imagine what it meant. Mom, I'm going to tell you, we face, y'all face some hard times. We face it together, amen. 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 But moms, they they have a hard road sometimes. The difficulties of moms. The difficulties of motherhood. Dad, we think we know what it's all about because we went to Lamaze. <laughs> uh, let me see a show of hands right there. How many men ever took that class? Is that it? Well, we got two right here. All right. Do they even have that no more anymore? Yes. Why? Hey, man, they should, they should do away with that. Hey, man, that does nothing but get the man in trouble. Hey, man. Uh, 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 I'm going to tell you, whenever it comes to motherhood, it comes to giving birth. Hey, man, uh, men, you got a very small part. Uh, mom, <laughs> mama, mama takes on the brunt of the work. Hey, man. Uh, I know this by fact and from experience. I know I was there when both of my children were born, and uh, I was there when both of them were conceived. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Just want to clear that up. Got to look out of Keith right here. See my sound man right there. <laughs> Amen. Get that rumor took care of real quick, right? Amen. <laughs> Everybody shaking their head at the preach. But I remember going in there, and I thought I had the coat shirt on. Lamaze gives you. Remember that? And I was going to do my part. And uh, uh, she was so excited. I remember when Justin was born, we went through that whole week-long Lamaze. And uh, she called me. Belinda called me from down. Uh, from I was at work. Meet me at the hospital. It's time. I remember the smile on her face and how pleasant she was. She was so excited. She was waiting out. She wasn't going in without me. Well, some 45 minutes is all we was there before Justin was born. This was going to happen with or without the doctor, amen. And uh, I remember, uh, had my coat shirt on, man, I was right there ready to go. I remember the breathing techniques. I remember how to support her. And uh, but about halfway through this, I started realizing this wasn't working out like the, co the, like the instructor said. I thought, well, I'm going to do my part in the middle of this pushing, you know. I come up behind her, and I remember her back being beat red. And I put my hand on her back, and I said, just push. Like that right there. And I remember her looking around at me and somewhere from down low. Amen. These words come back around and said, don't touch me. <laughs> Amen. I knew right then my work was done. Amen. So I'm over here in the corner with a, with a book fanning myself, amen, and I realized how much more, hey, that's what I'm getting at, how much more a mother has to go through. I, now, I love my children with all my heart, but moms, I'm going to tell you what, I believe if you've ever experienced the love of a godly mother, now, listen, other than Jesus Christ, I believe I can speak with authority on this because I've lived it and I've experienced it. If you've ever experienced the unconditional, self-sacrificing love of a godly mother, no one else this side of eternity other than our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ will ever love you that much. Amen. I believe that with all my heart. As much as husbands love their wives. And as much as wives love their, their husbands, but I don't believe there's ever a love this side of eternity other than the love of God that touches the love of a mother. Here uh, this week, I've seen a 
a uh, video of two teenage daughters. And they was holding up, and I challenge you to look that up on YouTube. They was holding up little notes. And it told the story of their mother. They said at their ages of, they was probably 18 or 19 years old during this video. But said at the ages of seven, and the middle daughter was five, and their younger son was three. Said they've had a loving home and a loving family, and they'd went on vacation. And she said that they had rented a cabin that overlooked the cliff. Said they was there with their grandmother and grand, uh, grandfather, and said they had just had pulled up to the cabin, and her mother and father and grandfather and grandmother got out to go register, and the kids, she said, we stayed in the SUV in their seat belt. And he said, for some unknown reason, said the mother had the keys in her pocket, that SUV began to roll. And that SUV began to roll towards that cliff. And without hesitation, the mother takes off running and gets, <laughs> gets in front of that SUV and was trying to hold it back. And that one of the, the little girls said, I rem we still remember the look on our mother's face as she disappeared and went underneath that SUV. They said, we remember what it felt like whenever the SUV bumped against our mother's body, which bought just enough time for our grandfather to run up next to it and pull the emergency brake. And she said that, the weight of that SUV should have killed our mother. She said, but it didn't. However, that accident has left our mother paralyzed from the waist down. So our mother has said many times she has never regret, nor she would do it all over again because she still has her three babies there with her. Those girls said our mother has never missed a piano recital. Our mother has never missed a tennis tournament. Our mother is our rock. Our mother is that voice that's on the end of the line whenever you need her the most. The mothers, the love and, and self-sacrificing of our mothers. I believe that's only a love that God can give, amen, that God can give. So our mothers face difficulties that tires her heart out, that rips her heart. But thank God there's no greater love that you can have than the love of a mother. How blessed our mothers are. Amen. One thing that I want us to see about Mary, the Bible in our text scripture here says this, that now there stood by the cross of Jesus, his mother and his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Cleophas, and Mary Magdalene. There's only one person that was there both the day that Jesus was born and the day that Jesus died on the cross. Mary, the mother of Jesus, was there at both occurrences. She was there whenever Jesus was born, but also there by the cross when Jesus took his last breath before giving up the ghost. That shows us one point that I want you to understand about the love of a mother. This is a, a small inkling of an earthly example of a God kind of love. The love of a mother never gives up. The love of a mother never quits. Could you imagine the hardships, the times that she had seen in the walk of Jesus as even his own people refused to believe him, ridiculed and mocked and made fun of. But yet Mary kept those things and pondered them in her heart and knew that her son, Jesus, is the Son of God. She was faithful as she stood by Jesus all the way to the cross. You know, I wrote, I, I, I'd written this down. I'd, 
I'd read here uh, a few weeks ago uh, a poem, and it said this. Grown up means nothing to a mother. A child is a child. They get bigger, they get older. But grown up, in a mother's heart, each child will always be their baby. I believe that holds true. To every mom, I can see a lot of people's uh, nodding their heads. You felt the love and you know the love and you have the love of a mother. But I want us to see that love only comes from one place. The love that a mother has and the children receive from a mother comes from only one place and that is the throne of God. That's a God kind of love in an earthly vessel. The Bible gives us examples that Jesus has given us in his scripture. But yet he looked at John. John is one of the three, you remember, of the inner circle. There was Peter and James and John. You look on the, now, now you search the scriptures, and I know we've got the recordings of uh, first, second, and, and, and the books of John there, and, and third. But I want you to look, there was very few times after this very incident that took place at the foot of the cross that you see John mentioned in scripture a few times in the book of Acts but he is the very one that the Bible describes as the disciple the one that Jesus loved I believe John had a very special place in the heart of Jesus but I believe before God before Jesus Christ ever chose his disciples Jesus knew the job that he had for John you know what Jesus done there on the cross figuratively he placed Mary's hand in the hand of John and said John I want you to take care of my mama she's never left me she's walked with me even when other people didn't believe in me. And I'm paraphrasing this, but I believe this is the heart of Jesus. I believe he said, John, she, she's, she deserves to be taken care of. And I'm going to leave, and I'm going to have to go away. But while I'm gone, I want you to take care of my mama. I believe Jesus would have us to do the very same thing. You say, preacher, you don't know what's took place in my life. I don't. But one thing I do know, if you lack a mama, we got a Savior that can be one. If you lack a daddy, thank God we've got a Savior. We've got a Heavenly Father that'll, be, that'll stick closer to you than a brother. Amen. Maybe you're here today and you say, well, I don't have any children of my own. Not only that God give you the love of a mother in your heart for these other ones, I want you to understand, be an example to these children. Be an example to those in your community. Amen. Too often, too many times, you say, people will say, well, they're not mine, and I don't have any responsibilities uh, uh, because of them. I beg to differ. Amen. If God has placed young people in your life or in your home or in your church, you have a great responsibility to train them up in the fear and the admonition of the Lord. It's been a joy being with you here today. We're going to sing. I'm, Brother Bobby, where are you at? Here. All right. Bro, Brother Bobby, if you will, would you come? Uh, we're going to sing a, a, just an invitation song, Just As I Am. If we could do that. I believe that's a fitting song, Just As I Am. Because, I, you know what, that's, that describes the love of a mother. Regardless of what you do, where you go, a godly mother's going to love you, ain't she? Amen? That ain't going to change that. Maybe she might not agree with what you do or where you go, but she loves you. Amen. I want you to tell you about one that loves you more than mama. His name's Jesus Christ. He loves you more than mama, and he done for you what mama could not do. Mama, even Mary herself, needed a Savior. We've all seen and come short of the glory of God. But Jesus loves you. He died for you. The Holy Spirit can save you if you'll call upon him today. Just as you are, would you stand right where you at? One verse of 
just as I am. And if God's touched your heart, you've never been saved. You can just bow your head right where you're at. You can, you can call out to Him. Say, Lord, save me. Know that, you're a, know that you're a sinner. Believe in your heart that God hath raised Him from death unto life. Amen. He'll do the same for you. You call upon Him. He will save you. As we sing together, one verse of Just As I Am. Just as I am without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me, and that thou biddest me come to and every one of you, whether you're listening by uh, Facebook Live, whether you're here in person or in your vehicles, um, if you you still have your mom here with you, you love her, amen, she needs to hear it, amen, she needs to feel it, and she needs to see it, amen, be thankful for what God's given you, we're going to dismiss in a word of prayer, and, uh, and as we sign off here in just a moment from this, uh, we don't know what uh, next week will hold, amen, but thank God we know who's got it in the palm of his hand. We'll be in touch with you and uh, we'll see uh, the response that we have from our outside service and maybe um, you know, weather permitting we can do this. If not, uh, if it is raining, what we might do, we may have Brother Keith, if he don't mind, he does. And I want to thank him, amen. I want to thank Brother Keith uh, so much. He, he set this up here. Uh, appreciate uh, our ladies as they broadcast it. Appreciate everyone. Uh, that makes this possible. I know uh, next Sunday is, is on our schedule as um, homecoming. Uh, it'll be a little difficult. I don't know if we can put some things together or not, uh, but we'll just see what the Lord uh, Lord has in store, okay? And we pray that God's will be, we be done and uh, pray one for another, okay? Let us dismiss in a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Fathers, we bow before you once again. God, we thank you for your touch and the presence of the Holy Spirit. God, we thank you for our family that is gathered here, Lord, gathered at home. And God, where some are even in the workplace that may be listening. God, these are in vehicles, Lord. I thank you for bringing us back in the presence of one another. And God, collectively, through the presence of the Holy Spirit. For without you, God, nothing would be accomplished. Nothing would uh, avail. And God, I know that your word will go out, uh, Lord, and it will accomplish what you sent it forth to do. And Lord, we trust in that. And as always, Lord, help us to decrease that Christ may increase. Save that when it's lost. Touch our sick, Lord. We've got many prayer requests. Many that are in the prayer box. Touch and bless them. Lord, I pray that you'd help our mothers to have a good, safe day. Lord, enjoy the time with their children. For those hearts, Lord, that are heavy because their mother has went on, has slipped on out into eternity. And those that are gathered around your throne, Lord, I pray a heart, uh, Lord, that is comforted today to know that separation is just for a short period of time. And Lord, for just a little while, we've got to be down here. But there's a reunion day. Lord, thank you to Heavenly Father for that blessed day, our blessed hope, God, knowing that one of these days, God, we're going to be gathered around the throne with all of our loved ones throughout eternity. In Christ's name we pray, amen and amen.